Welcome everyone to our webinar, Bluetooth at the Edge 2019 Market Update with the Bluetooth SIG. Presenting today are Chuck Sabin from the Bluetooth SIG and Kevin Tate from Rogato. Our first presenter today is Chuck Sabin, Senior Director of Business Strategy at the Bluetooth SIG, where he helps identify insight, trends, and projections to influence and drive the development of strategic business priorities. The Bluetooth Special Interest Group is a global community of over 34,000 companies serving to unify, harmonize, and drive innovation in the vast range of connected devices all around us. Through collective creation and shared technical standards, Bluetooth simplifies, secures, and enriches the technology experience of users worldwide. Their vision is a connected world that is free from wires, a world where everything and everyone that wants to connect should be able to do so in a simple, secure, and wireless way. And with that, I will pass it over to Chuck. You know, we continue to grow. Uh, it, it, it just continues to astound me the, the number of companies that continue to become a part of this organization and a part of this community around the Bluetooth technology. Uh, with nearly 35,000 member companies, you know, Bluetooth continues to grow as a diverse company or a diverse community where companies can collaborate, innovate, and ultimately help drive success uh, with the technology. And those the, the member companies are a worldwide organization. It's actually split uh, almost a third in the US, a third in, in EMEA, and a third in the, in the APAC region. So we generally speaking have a very large worldwide basis for our uh, organization. And what really becomes apparent is how the efforts of that Bluetooth community are really directly impacting the commercial success that everyone seems to to uh, to to access relative to the technology. Uh, annual shipments of Bluetooth products are continuing to grow at what we consider an incredible rate, an unprecedented rate. Uh, you know, when you think about technology over over the years, uh, with four billion shipments expected. Uh, this year alone of Bluetooth-enabled devices, uh, Bluetooth will continue to grow towards what we see as a five and a half billion device, Bluetooth-enabled device market that will be shipping each and every year by 2023. And so that's an incredible growth rate and an incredible set of, of uh, number of devices that will ultimately be uh, out into the market. And so when you think about, well, how has that continued to happen? How has that growth continued to happen? For the, for the technology. Well, for over those two decades, Bluetooth technology has, has continued and has been delivering what we consider the features that are necessary to help drive a diverse success across markets and across devices uh, for the technology. And this has really helped Bluetooth propel from just being known as a consumer application and a consumer technology to being available and, and, and accepted in more industrial and commercial applications as well. So today, Bluetooth is driving four multiple waves of, of innovation in the market. Uh, specifically, Bluetooth is driving four waves of innovation uh, that we'll want to talk to in terms of the future of, of Bluetooth. The first is audio streaming, probably the one that, that most people know. The second is simple low energy data transfer. This was driven by the launch and release of, of the Bluetooth low energy technology. The third is location services capabilities. And the fourth wave of innovation is around device networks, primarily driven by the launch of uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth mesh networking capabilities. And so for each of these areas and each of the solutions, the developers are ultimately getting a full stack you know, fit for purpose of solutions that are aimed at helping address the specific con connectivity needs within these solutions. So for the rest of the time, what I wanted to do was to, was to look at the future of each of these individually and, and give you a sense of where the future of Bluetooth is going beyond what people might see as just the consumer type of application. But we will start with audio streaming. Uh, and, and I don't know if it's, it's fully aware, but the, this migration from, uh, you know, to, from wired audio to wireless audio streaming is, is almost complete. Uh, by 2023, over 90% of all speakers sold worldwide will actually include Bluetooth in it. 93% of all new cars, trucks, and SUVs shipping worldwide 
worldwide by 2023 will come standard with Bluetooth technology. Am I given the choice to purchase new headphones, not the ones that show up in the box when you when you buy your phone, but when you're actually purchasing headphones for yourself, over half of all consumers choose wireless headphones over wireless phones. And so when you see the, the, the trends in the market, you can probably thank Bluetooth for this trend to ultimately remove the audio jack from smartphones, speakers, audio systems, and, and other audio devices. So by 2023, there will be over one and a quarter billion Bluetooth audio streaming devices shipping each and every year. And as one of the largest single largest use cases for Bluetooth, you know, we continue to see momentum and, and this type of solution only getting better. Uh, in the coming months, you'll actually start seeing more details about additional capabilities that are being added into the audio functionality for Bluetooth going forward in the future. Uh, capabilities, new things such as a new codec uh, that's more efficient and more power efficient, uh, support for multiple audio streams for audio sharing amongst you, your, your friends, as well as new capabilities around uh, public audio type broadcasts where you can start broadcasting audio from, let's say, TVs in, a, in an environment, let's say, in a bar or a public uh, place or uh, public audio broadcasts at an airport uh, where you're listening to uh, uh, broadcasts around uh, gate changes or information that are associated with the airport. All of this can start coming through the audio screen potentially in the future. So in the coming months, you'll start to see some, some changes in that. But while you know, there's no doubt that audio has been at the core of what Bluetooth has, has ultimately driven in, in the past and is still continue to be, continues to be very important, the dominance of audio as the number one solution area for Bluetooth is actually shifting because of the flexibility that the technology is driving into the, into the market. Ultimately, simple data transfer capabilities that were driven by the launch of Bluetooth Low Energy is actually set to become the number one solution area for Bluetooth in 2023. By 2023, over 1.3 billion devices with simple data transfer in mind will be shipping each and every year. Uh, and this shift is really what we consider evidence of the strength and importance that Bluetooth Low Energy has really driven to the market. Uh, for, for years, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy has been really helping create Markets like wearables, as an example, can be probably the whole market can be credited through the, the launch of Bluetooth Low Energy. It's like smart watches and other devices as well. But what we're really seeing in the market, and what's really sort of propelling this sort of drive to new solutions is, and what's more interesting is the diversity and the variety of devices and innovation that's ultimately coming to the market. The, the research from ABI, which is really the basis for many of, the, of the, 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 the data that we talk about here, by 2023, over 14% of all connected endpoints using Bluetooth will fall outside some traditional device category definition. And, and what this really means is that when you normally put devices in categories like wearables or smartwatches, remote, remote controls, and so on, for 14% of the devices using simple data transfer in 2023, you're basically saying that anything, and the market is basically saying that anything can become a connected device that is ultimately free from wires. This includes things like sensor networks and placing sensors on any type of device that you're trying to do readings from or uh, you're trying to collect information from. Ultimately, anything that has data can ultimately turn that into information through a Bluetooth connection uh, in it. And we're just seeing this continued trend towards you know, everything ultimately having the ability to be, uh, to be connected. And in this idea of anything that can be connected and, and can be a connected device, this has really been driven by a number of recent announcements that have provided flexibility to the market in order to make this changeover from very specific consumer applications to a variety of, of other applications and technology. Uh, it really started with the, the, the release of Fuji 5 some time back, where that also included uh, capabilities for like longer range capabilities. Ultimately, this extended the range of the signal by four 
times uh, in support of devices that needed a reliable connection. So things like whole home or whole building or whole you know, factory type uh, use cases. But it's not just the longer range, it's ultimately driving a more reliable connection in what we would consider noisy environments. Right? It's one thing to have a wireless connection in, let's say, an urban warehouse. It's another thing, another thing to try to maintain a reliable connection in the basement of a nuclear power plant. And ultimately, this capability allowed for the, the ability for, for uh, solutions to have more reliable connections using Bluetooth in a variety of environments. Ultimately, we could tune the technology to what we needed. We also added capabilities for higher speed, effectively doubling the throughput of data to support faster data transfer. Uh, for wireless firmware updates and support and supporting solutions that needed the ability to ultimately quickly offload large amounts of data. And so these kinds of capabilities and others as well have effectively given developers and, and solution developers the ability to fine tune the technology to ultimately meet their market needs. And so it's this flexibility that, that we believe has all but assured that there will continue to be this acceleration of Bluetooth in low power data transfer solutions and, and ultimately driving the diversity of devices that and solutions that, that, uh, that include Bluetooth. And so this is a very important wave of the, of the technology for, uh, for Bluetooth. The third wave of innovation that's being driven by Bluetooth is the solution area around location services. Uh, this is actually one of the more clever pieces of innovation that uh, members brought to the technology and have continued to expand on. Uh, and this came with the introduction of Bluetooth and Flow Energy as well, where uh, where we were where there was an opportunity to address uh, the need for inexpensive mass market indoor location positioning, wayfinding, and asset asset tracking type solutions. Uh, traditional technologies like GPS. Uh, they generally don't perform well indoors, and so Bluetooth has this ability and this opportunity to fill that gap. Uh, according to ABI research, uh, and one of the areas around why this will be a, a very successful area for Bluetooth is that by 2023, there will be 1.7 billion handsets, phones, tablets, and, and others that are actively engaged in Bluetooth location services. And that's a, that's a significant number of people that are ultimately engaging in the services that are being provided out into the, out into the market. And, and that ultimately is no wonder why we see a six times growth in annual shipment of location services related devices uh, between now and 2023, including beacons and gateways and other products that are enabling these types of solutions for the, for the market. And, and ultimately, what this means is that location services is the fastest growing solution area for Bluetooth today. It's not the largest volume solution area for Bluetooth, but it is the fastest growing solution area for, for, for Bluetooth. And, and if you've been following the, the Bluetooth specification development and changes in the, in the specification, location services has, has ultimately been, uh, has received some significant significant focus over the past couple of, of releases as well. Uh, location services have benefited from ultimately two very specific announcements that have, that have come to the market recently. First, uh, the capability for bigger broadcast data of location services is generally uh, built on the advertising capabilities of the technology and, and the need for to enable richer solutions for beacons and sensor networks that were relying on these broadcasts uh, to communicate location-specific information. Uh, the, the capability for adding more information into that broadcast was, uh, was developed and delivered into the, into the market. And more recently, Bluetooth also introduced uh, what we can call direction-finding capabilities. Uh, so now not only can you determine uh, like in an item finding solution that the item is near me, now you can determine in which direction it can be found. And so this feature alone uh, is transforming the ability to deliver location services solutions from meter level accuracy, as an example, down to centimeter level accuracy, uh, enabling 
uh, uh, more accuracy and, and more ability to, to deliver better solutions in item finding, asset tracking, and various ways finding solutions. And there's ultimately more to come in this area as well. Uh, we're actively, the Bluetooth City is actively working on additional capabilities to increase the distance accuracy of the solution even further, meaning how far away is it. So not only will you be able to determine is it in the area, you'll be able to determine it's coming from, it's in this direction, you'll also be able to determine things like it's this far away. So these are all areas and dimensions of continuing to increase the overall set of capabilities that location services can bring for solutions out into the out into the market. The fourth area of innovation uh, for, for Bluetooth really concerns device networks. And this is really driven by the release of Bluetooth Mesh Networking. Uh, a few years ago, uh, the Bluetooth community, including companies like Regato, you know, turned some of its attention towards addressing additional needs of, of emerging markets like smart buildings, smart industries, and smart homes. And, and what we found and what the market found was that these markets were looking for a standard wireless solution that would enable large-scale device networks for control, monitoring, and automation of services like light as, as an example. And, and they needed a technology that would ultimately enable hundreds or even thousands of devices to reliably and securely communicate with one another. So what came of that market need was the introduction of Bluetooth mesh networking capabilities for, for device networks. And we're seeing a tremendous amount of support and momentum behind the mesh networking capabilities in Bluetooth, including large players in, in let's say, the smart home market or even looking into, into smart building and retail market. Uh, where companies in China like Alibaba and Xiaomi, as an example, are making strategic platform decisions to support Bluetooth mesh networking for developers who are building against their platforms. They're, they're making that bet on Bluetooth, and, and we're seeing more and more of that, uh, of that momentum in the market. And so device networks will see actually a three times growth in annual shipments of devices, growing to 360 million per year shipping by 2023. And in the smart home alone, we'll see a four and a half times growth in annual shipments of residential smart lighting uh, as an example by, by 2023. And this continued growth will be continued to be driven by members that are improving functionality and driving new functionality for, for not only residential, but for commercial and industrial environments as well. Uh, because with the, with the, the mesh networking capabilities, you're really getting a true, that should be true, sorry for the misspelling, but a true industrial grade uh, solution. And we'll see additional capabilities coming into the into the Bluetooth mesh networking, enabling new network optimization, over the air upgrades, and even more models and, and additional optimizations going into the into the market as well. And so a significant, a continuous significant effort goes into delivering. Uh, the networking capabilities of Bluetooth into driving new solutions for, for commercial and industrial and other, uh, and other applications of the, of the technology. So to kind of close, start to close things up, you know, it's really these solutions, uh, audio streaming, data transfer, location services, and device networks that are ultimately allowing Bluetooth to, to, to deliver the flexibility and, and, the, and address the needs of multiple markets, not just the consumer market that most people know Bluetooth for, but for, for delivering solutions against more industrial, commercial, and other applications uh, of, of the technology. And we're really seeing a significant amount of momentum in the, in, in the market as we go forward. So, you know, as, as as I said before, as most people might know, Bluetooth for our traditional markets on the left-hand side, uh, what we are continuing to do is address the new capabilities, not just for the left-hand side, but for the right-hand side as well. So looking out beyond the traditional markets, Bluetooth will continue to drive the future of new emerging markets for wireless technology, including markets like smart buildings, smart homes, smart industry, and smart city. They're using capabilities within the data transfer, location services, as well as the device networking capabilities. And so each of these has a slightly 
unique set of use cases, focuses and uh, focus and, and varieties. But what you're seeing within Bluetooth technology is the delivery around the flexibility of Bluetooth that allows the community to ultimately address the needs of each one of these markets in a, in a specific way. And, and we at Bluetooth will continue to drive to that vision of a connected world free from wires using the flexibility of the, of the technology. And so before I go, and I, and I thank you again for, for your time, I, you know, I just wanted to make sure that it was clear that, that I'm very excited for the future of Bluetooth and, and for the, the, the solutions that Regato is, is ultimately uh, going to be able to bring into the market using Bluetooth technology. And so I hope you found this information informative, but if you're looking for more, because uh, I presented a lot of numbers, and, and there's a, there, we do have uh, what we published recently is the 2019 Bluetooth market update, and it expands on this information. It's based off of research that we that we partner with at ABI Research as a as a research organization, but it really provides a comprehensive view of Bluetooth, the solutions, the markets, and our role and the forecasts around that role going into 2023. So I encourage you to download that report and other valuable valuable resources that are available to you. So with that, I wanted to thank you very much for your time and hand it back over to. Great. Thanks a lot, Chuck. Um, now we will hear from Kevin. Thanks, Christy. Let's see here. Let me get my screen sharing going. Make sure everyone uh, can see that. Does that look okay there, Christy? Looks great. Perfect. Great. Well, thank you very much, Chuck. Um, we're big fans of that report. It gives us uh, a really unique uh, view into where, where Bluetooth is headed, and in particular, uh, where different uh, use cases and technology capabilities are being applied to our neck of the woods, which is commercial IoT, Bluetooth solutions. And so with that in mind, I wanted to dive into a couple of areas that we're particularly focused on as we're working with companies to, to leverage Bluetooth at scale in those types of environments. If you're not familiar with Regato, uh, just briefly, uh, we've been working with Bluetooth and Bluetooth Low Energy since way back in 2010. Uh, today, our focus is on edge data solutions that leverage Bluetooth and other low-power wireless technologies to get data from smart building environments up into the cloud. Uh, we have lots of partners uh, that we work with, and we're, we're proud to work with customers all over the world. By and large, what people are using Regato for and what we're trying to uh, help them do with Bluetooth uh, is to use sensors and gateways to bring devices and sensors online in these types of environments. So uh, things like retail and logistics or smart workplaces or hospital and healthcare centers. And they're trying to get those devices connected so they can serve operational needs or maybe more people and asset monitoring based solutions. And as Chuck said, things like location services are growing very, very quickly. There's a lot of interest in, in leveraging Bluetooth for those uh, for, uh, for all kinds of good reasons. So this is typically the, the, the problem that we're helping our customers to solve or the opportunity we're helping them to address. And so looking at some of the numbers deeper in that report, and I, I really do encourage you to check out the, the full 2019 market report. There's some really interesting figures there about the proliferation of wireless devices and data. And, and Bluetooth in particular is, uh, we've seen even in the last 12 months, uh, gain a lot of momentum uh, as a, what we think will be the, the, the primary way that people gather data from most of these commercial environments and the primary way that they, they connect to, uh, to devices in those environments. And that is driving a lot of interest in, uh, in the types of edge networking that, that Regato helps with. The other big driver, though, is as companies look to connect those devices and systems for lots of different reasons, there's, there's a bit of an aha moment, I think, at a, at a company level, but also at an industry level, that that can't be done um, with, with a stovepipe approach. You can't have um, a path to the cloud with a device gateway cloud endpoint for every single different use case. 
In fact, what, what you need is, is the ability to create a, a shared and secure infrastructure so that a, a broad number of sensors or devices can leverage a common set of gateways and protocols and data pipelines to get the data where it needs to go in the cloud. And that, that's a big deal because that's, um, that's not historically how a lot of these things have happened. Uh, if we look at you know, some of the areas of, of IoT that have been around for a little longer than commercial IoT, like industrial IoT, a lot of times what you've got is a, is a single uh, sensor gateway cloud and a stovepipe approach. So we've been thinking a lot about how do we help companies create these uh, shared infrastructures uh, at scale using Bluetooth. And there are really three areas where we see uh, systems integrators and solution providers um, uh, needing, some, uh, needing some, some help, needing to uh, overcome some of the challenges that, uh, to taking advantage of the technology. One is making Bluetooth easy, especially for enterprise application developers, so those who are coming from a web or cloud background. Um, because Bluetooth isn't intuitive necessarily to folks coming from that direction. The second is reducing the cost of deploying the, the gateway infrastructure that's required, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and then keeping the overall system secure. Um, oftentimes, you know, our gateways and gateways like ours are going into commercial environments for five, six, seven years or more and figuring out how to keep everything secure, even as the world changes around them, is a, is a significant challenge. So I wanted to zoom into these a little bit more. Uh, there are folks on the call who are thinking about how to take advantage of some of these um, Bluetooth capabilities in a more commercial IoT context. I wanted to share how we're, how we're looking to, to address some of those challenges and opportunities. When it comes to making Bluetooth easy, uh, there's a lot that we do on our gateways uh, to abstract uh, the actual sensor connectivity from the data that it is providing to the associated cloud services. And a lot of that happens in something that we call Edge Connect. So uh, for companies that use Regato, uh, we're able to basically present Bluetooth devices and data as if they were web services. And so uh, development teams that are used to working with RESTful APIs or consuming data through, uh, through JSON uh, can do just that, uh, whether, uh, what, regardless of, of how those devices are connected or, or what version of Bluetooth or what gap profiles they might be employing and so on. So we talk about that as a Bluetooth to cloud data pipeline and making that uh, flexible and configurable is something we found is, is very helpful, especially for, for development teams that are coming from a more cloud or, or enterprise app-centric uh, development paradigm. As to the second one, how do you reduce the, the overall cost of ownership, the total cost of ownership of the network that's required? Uh, we have a, a part of our gateway cascade solution that we call Edge Direct, and really that's a, a set of cloud-based tools to help with the monitoring and management of those gateways. Uh, everything from uh, configuring and, and provisioning those gateways before they're deployed, monitoring gateway performance for things like connectivity, uh, disk, uh, CPU usage, uh, and then the ability to orchestrate uh, application deployment. Um, you know, some of these um, challenges, you know, we, we didn't really learn about until we had thousands of gateways deployed all over the world, and then we saw how some of those orchestration and updating needs change at scale. And uh, so we've developed a set of tools with that in mind, and uh, we're uh, you know, proud to have about 100,000 gateways uh, deployed around the world right now, and having a consistent tool set for managing those types of deployments is, uh, is really key for our clients. And then the third area, quickly, is, is around security. Um, we've looked a lot at security and worked with, with large customers around how do you, how do you deploy uh, gateways in a way that is efficient but also can be kept secure. And so part of our advantage there is that uh, because we are manufacturing the gateways, um, we can do that on behalf of a specific client and we can embed the secure key and, and encrypted ID in the gateway at the point of manufacture. And then we can ship those directly to our customer, or even the customer's point of installation as a part of a kit, 
so that when they plug in, they're, they're, they're ready to go and they're ready to run securely for the life of the, of the gateway and its connected devices. And that ends up, again, being a, a big deal in terms of not just cost of ownership, but also security um, as these things live in the field for a long time. And finally, to that point, uh, the, the art of staying secure uh, is something that requires not just starting with um, that, that and, and uh, an encrypted operating system and environment on the gateway, but it also means regular updates. And so part of what we've built into our, our gateways and the Cascade solution from Regato is regular security patches that address relevant um, confirmed uh, vulnerabilities and, uh, and exploits as those emerge. And if you, if you follow these types of edge environments, you know that there's, there's an awful lot of new threats that emerge, um, depending on how you would want to count it. There were more than 1,200 um, that were cataloged even just this May so far. So uh, staying on top of those, making sure that any relevant ones, like say the, uh, something related to Bluetooth or to Wi-Fi or to any of the networking connectivity, that those patches are applied uh, and that any, uh, any threats or vulnerabilities are ad addressed right away. So those are some of the things that, that we've built into our gateway solutions and our cascade management software to try to overcome uh, some of the large scale uh, challenges that, that companies will find when they deploy low power wireless. I have to say, I think that um, Bluetooth in particular with the, with the most recent specifications and the things that came out in, around Bluetooth 5 and 5.1 have gone a long way toward making it uh, not just possible, but very cost effective to deploy these devices and the associated gateway networks in the, in the hundreds of thousands and even millions of devices. So ultimately, that's our, our Cascade Edge as a service and some of the things that it, that it enables. If that's of interest, uh, there's lots more we can talk about about um, how the Cascade network does what it does. Drop us a line and be happy to talk more about uh, how we partner with solution providers and systems integrators on Cascade. And with that, thanks very much. And thanks again to Chuck. Really appreciate you uh, sharing the report and being a part of today's webinar. Uh, I saw we had a few questions come in, so I'm going to flip over to those and see if there's anything that uh, Chuck or I can answer before we wrap. Got it. Question here about the location services. Um, someone asked, uh, what specifically do you mean by location services? Um, so I have a view on that from a, from a commercial IoT perspective, but Chuck, maybe you want to speak more broadly to location services and Bluetooth's role? Yeah, I can, I can speak to that. Um, the, when we say location services, it, it, it's really broken up into uh, two, two types of solutions, let's say, just in, in terms of categories. There's, there's proximity solutions, things like item finding and uh, maybe point of interest information. Uh, think about, you know, uh, pet trackers and people trackers or, or, you know, for your keys and your wallet and so on. Uh, we consider those sort of proximity solutions where you're trying to find something and, uh, and, and as part of a what we consider a quote location service, there is the ability to try to find that item. Uh, there's the point of interest type information that you see at museums or at retail centers where you approach an item and because you've approached that item and become near it, you're presented with more information about that particular item. So that's part of the, the location services area in, in terms of proximity. And then there's what we would consider more positioning systems. Positioning systems are, are what we consider more associated with asset tracking, uh, inventory management, uh, uh, maybe tracking of and real time tracking of the location of and condition of certain items, uh, whether or not it's in, 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 a, in a warehouse or at a construction site. Uh, you know, these types of items are, or even to personnel tracking that we've seen in, in uh, high industrial plants where where worker safety is a is a is a, is a big uh, challenge and, and a big need, right? The the real time location of information is part of the, the sort of positioning solutions, and, and Bluetooth has been providing 
uh, fundamental capabilities to, to enable this type of solution. And then there's wayfinding as well. Wayfinding is indoor indoor uh, uh, navigation capabilities. We see this at airports. We've seen it at at, uh, um, at sports venues. Uh, you know, how do I get to my seat, or how do I find the nearest you know restroom or the the place that sells the best beer? You know, whatever it might be. You know, these types of wayfinding solutions we've seen in, in those types of environments, as well as retail at malls and and navigating you from your parking spot to the store that you're trying to get to in the most efficient manner. So when we think about location services, it, it sort of categorizes in those sort of cat those 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 uh, types of solutions, proximity type solutions, as well as positioning uh, type of, of of solutions. That's perfect. Thanks, Chuck. And uh, there was another question that came in uh, asking if we were developing any 5.1 solutions here at Regato. So maybe I'll talk about that um, in response to the last question as well. The short answer is yes, we're working on 5.1 solutions, uh, which um, really means adding in the angle of arrival and angle of departure capabilities uh, that allow for even better um, precise locationing uh, based on Bluetooth signals at the, at the device and at the gateway. And uh, that we, we actually did a, a webinar um, going back just a couple of months about asset tracking using Bluetooth um, that um, is, uh, ha has some good information there if interested. Um, that said, I think there, uh, as we work with um, location-based solutions in places like warehouses and uh, factory floors, we are finding that um, more often than not, what companies are looking to accomplish isn't so much real-time location services, so not at any at any given second where's the dot on the map, but rather a more sort of um, zone-based understanding uh, of say how something is progressing through the five or six stages of a factory, or if there's a key piece of equipment, uh, is it where it's supposed to be, or is it has it been in a safety zone for longer than it should be? And I, I think that's important because though that level of um, location awareness and intelligence uh, is is not as granular as what 5.1 um, would enable. You don't need sub meter accuracy. Really, it's more like three to five meter accuracy is required in a lot of cases. So, um, so all that is to say, there's a lot of ways to apply Bluetooth to these various location based use cases and figuring out what the right level of sort of performance, cost, and fidelity um, is, is a lot of what we partner with companies on. Uh, had a question, um, would my 832-based uh, Regato module work with the new gateway? Yes, all the, uh, all the existing Bluetooth modules from Regato uh, work with, with all of our current and future gateways. Um, I think what that question is referring to is that in addition to our um, our gateways and edge networking solutions. Regato also has a, a full line of, of Bluetooth modules based, uh, uh, based primarily on, on the Nordic family. Uh, another question, do you have a list of supported sensors and field devices? Uh, yes, uh, please, uh, please drop me an email so I remember to, to send you a list of our, our sensor partners and supported devices, uh, but uh, broadly, um, we support all the all the standard beaconing profiles and a growing list of um, of third party sensors. We can also, as you would expect, integrate with just about anything with our solutions team. Looking at other questions here, um, someone asked: Is uh, is connecting within a warehouse environment uh, realistic? Um, yes. So, so the example I gave earlier, the um, Bluetooth is something we're seeing companies want to use a lot inside of warehouse and, and sort of light factory environments. Uh, as Chuck brought up earlier, in some of those larger uh, environments, mesh becomes an important option. And so uh, we work with a number of companies who offer mesh-based solutions um, as well as you know advertising-based solutions, um, both of which I think are are key for those types of lots and lots of assets inside a very large space kind of applications. Uh, let's see, I just saw another question. 
Let's see, where did that one go? <laughs> I don't think I can see that one. Christy, did you say a question came in? On the yeah, uh, the question, how accurate does the BLE 5.1 uh, DFAOA reach? And how about multi-pass for uh, real warehouse applications? Ooh, Chuck, do you want to take that one? Uh, I'll take the, the, the first part of it, which is, uh, you know, when we look at the accuracy that is, uh, that is projected through the, through the solution using the direction finding capability, uh, what we're hearing from companies who are building out the solutions is that they're able to uh, more easily get to centimeter level accuracy of, of items and, and the location of, of, of items. Uh, versus meter level accuracy uh, using the traditional uh, proximity RSSI based uh, uh, solution. Uh, that said, uh, you know, I'll also note that you know, as the solutions have become more and more uh, sophisticated, uh, what we are finding is that uh, companies are able to drive even greater accuracy even within the RSSI based uh, uh, solutions. Uh, the the real intent of you know getting down to the centimeter level accuracy and the, and the capabilities that are available through direction finding is that you can have less potentially less infrastructure requirements to achieve even greater accuracy of your of your location of your of your items uh, and that that tends to be the you know the direction that the that the uh, that those organizations are looking at with regards to the technology. You know, that's a really good point. And it, it brings up, um, as we work in the, say, um, warehouse and factory environment versus a smart office environment, one of the things that we find with our, our customers going to a warehouse environment is, is that it, it is a much more sort of heterogeneous uh, wireless infrastructure, meaning, you know, they're going to have RFID and they may have ultra wideband or you know, getting increasing interest. Uh, in private 5G network opportunities, and you know, part of the reason we built so much, so many different connectivity options into our gateway was to work well in those heterogeneous environments, but also be able to complement those with Bluetooth. And I think we we see a much more um, a, a much more complex wireless um, set of uh, set of protocols in some of those, especially legacy systems um, that are going into manufacturing environments, where, uh, whereas something like smart office is often more of a greenfield, right? They might might have some Zigbee stuff, but uh, might be, we might be just talking about Bluetooth and Bluetooth mesh for sensors and lighting. So it really depends on the environment too. Very good. Well, I think that's all the questions. So with that, let's wrap. And uh, thanks again, Chuck, uh, to you and to the Bluetooth SIG for joining us for the webinar. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Christy, for, for having me. And, and uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to, to speak to your audience and, and obviously encourage people to, to pull down the data that, uh, that we do provide and, and make available and, and use it to your own, uh, you know, to your own uses. Perfect. And a couple of folks asked about uh, the presentation. Uh, presentation uh, slides are available. If you drop us an email, we can, we can send you a copy of the deck. We'll also be turning this into a, a recording and, and putting that up on YouTube, and you'll be able to get to them from our website. Great. Thanks very much, all. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Have an excellent day.